Ho, ho, day six. <laughs> so I made it to day six. I don't know how, but that's a crock of shit. Okay, so I have cheated with cooked drinks, coffee, and I had um, something else. But anyways, just drinks and peanuts, cooked peanuts with my raisins I had. But I'm transitioning to the 100% fruit and I'm trying to do it gently as possible so I don't go through withdrawals and detox symptoms. And it's been a little rough because last night um, I was like having a hard time, man. I just wanted to lay down and go to sleep. And I'm at work, graveyard, dispatching. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, like, I just need to lay down. And so that's the thing about detox. And you always want to just lay down. You want to sleep through it. You don't want to be up and thinking. And I mean, I was so close last night to order. Well, I tried to order a pizza. I'm disgusted with myself to even say it out loud. But that's what this whole channel is about, is telling the truth. And what I'm going through on my journey to Wellville. From Hellville to Wellville is not an easy ride. Um, I've already done it before, so I know how to get there. I know how to do it. And the only thing stopping me is me and excuses and crutches and all that good shit. But I'm done, I'm done, done, I'm done. And I'm on my way. Every day I've been doing a little better. Um, well, basically, I've been doing the same every day. All I've been eating is fruit. Other than some nuts, I had some cooked peanuts and raw almonds, and I had uh, coffee because I was trying to be easy on myself. So that's what I'm doing. I'm transitioning out. Off tomorrow, I should. You know, the only reason why I drank the coffee is because working graveyard is really difficult to stay awake and not sleep in enough hours. So. Uh, I'm going to sleep right now, though. I'm going to sleep a good six, seven hours, and and that's a long time for me. If I sleep five hours, I'm good to go. So, um, and when I'm on the fruit, three hours, I'm good to go. Three hours a day. I did it for a long, long time, and so I know that we don't need to sleep more than that. So, um, right now, I need to sleep because I'm backed up on sleep. And, but yeah, I feel really good and healthy and happy and proud because I know where I'm going. I'm going forward and, um, going to get well, going to get some more videos out there showing proof of regeneration. And that was my whole journey. My whole goal on this journey was to regenerate, grow back my teeth. I have a tooth that I had pulled there and, um, I got one up here, one over there that is, you know, broke from when they gave me root canals years ago and they were crappy to begin with. And, um, but how do you fix cavities? I mean, other than fillings, isn't there a way to regenerate a tooth? It certainly is. All you have to do is clean the cells in the tooth because when you look at the tooth under a microscope it's made of cells spaces and two fluids so what we have blood going into the cell feeding nutrition oxygen and then we got the waste coming out of the cell removing the acidic waste that has a ph of approximately three ph so a three ph is really hot 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 and acidic okay look at coca-cola is what pepsi coke 2.9 pH, so 2.9 2 pH, that's hot. 3 pH is hot. That's the cellular waste that's coming out of your cells. It's very, very hot, corrosive, and so that's what kills your cells. But that's not what I was trying to get at. What was I trying to get at? <laughs> um, I don't even remember. It was important to, oh yeah, Pepsi. Pepsi, Coke. Okay, so you're looking at the pH on soda. 3 pH, same pH as, well, as soda is a little a bit hotter. I mean, it's hot, 2.93, basically right there. So if people fall into a vat of soda at the Coca-Cola factory and die, they fall into the soda and die because the soda is acidic and it will kill you. And 
it'll dissolve you. That's what acids do. And so if you drink soda, you fall in the soda, you don't want soda. But I'm saying that pH, that 3 pH is hot and you need to remove it. And once we do that, all the cells have to be cleaned. And then once they get clean, they get stronger. So your teeth are made of cells, so they'll get clean and stronger. I've actually watched the enamel on my teeth doing the raw foods. Okay, so I, I started January 2nd, 2017, and I watched my hair fall out and be all replaced with new hair. My hair was really bad. Okay, so I have the scar hair, but I had no hair at all on the side of my head. Like, all this whole area was bald, and I had hair up top, like, covering it up. But I don't know if you can even see it, but there's a scar there where my my ex hit me in the head with a hammer. And um, I can laugh about it. But he hit me in the head with a hammer, and so then um, cracked my head open. They had to give me staples in my head. And the hair never grew back because they had to shave my head to do the, the staples. And the head, ne the hair never grew back. And like 10 years went by, the hair would never grew back. Okay. So I go on the raw foods, 2017. I went, I started with a juice fast, 52 days on a juice fast. And all this hair started growing in like right here in my bangs area, like brand new hair. Like this whole, there was like a whole line of hair, like coming across hair. And that's what happens every so often, new hair comes growing in. Nothing's growing now because I've been messing around with cooked food for the last seven, eight months since last June when my mom passed. And like a week before she got sick, I, I mean, a week before she passed, I started eating pizza and Burger King dairy, which I hadn't had for years. Like, I would not put that shit in my body, and then all of a sudden I'm eating it. And, like, yeah, so anyways, shit happens. It happened, and it's over. And now I'm just picking up the pieces and trying to move on and not look back and not regret and not feel bad and not feel stupid or have remorse or any negative thoughts about it whatsoever. I did the best I could. I did better than I ever thought I would be able to do. You know, I always, ever since I was a kid, I was so close with my mom. And we had a very rare relationship. You never see two people this close. And we were so close. And I used to be so scared of losing her. And I remember I would like go into convulsions and crying over her, so afraid to lose her. And it was just pretty shitty. I always thought, like, when my mom dies, I was going to commit suicide. And I used to tell her that, like, you know, I have no reason to live. If you go, I'm just going to commit suicide. And she never told me not to do it. And I always said it for years, and she never said don't do it. It was like almost like she wanted me to do it so we could be together. And I always planned on doing it, but then when my mom died... I tried to stop myself from doing it because I felt like, well, there's a possibility that if I do it, that I'll never see her again. And not just that, but when my mom died, I felt like she came into my body. And you know, and that's the thing. Like, our bodies are just a vehicle to transport our soul. And it's just a temporary place that we're, we're experimenting this life experience, human experience. And, um, but for my whole existence, I planned on killing myself when my mom died. And then, so when the time came, it was just nightmare city. And I got to say all the way up until November, it, it, November was probably the worst time when I broke down really bad and I just didn't want to go on. I didn't want to live. And I went to the um, reverend at my church and uh, Unity Spiritual Center. It's not really a church. And I told her, like, I need you to pray for me because I don't want to live anymore. And then I started feeling better right after that. And because I went back on the fruit diet and 
raised my frequency and started feeling better and started feeling happy again. And then I went back to cook food and started feeling suicidal and depressed again. But but my whole point was, it's like I was programming myself to do that all my life. I planned on it. And then when the time came, it was like I, I expected myself to do it. I was like, how am I going to do it? When am I, why? I mean, like, oh, man. So, but I didn't want to. I, I just, I feel like life is just a game that we came here to play. And I'm not trying to quit because it's hard. I'm not trying to, you know, oh, I'm out now because this is just too much of a challenge for me. This is just too difficult. This is too painful. No, that's not how I roll. No, that's not my style. I'm going to get through it because I want to continue playing the game. I want to see what it's all about, not just the this part of it. You know, there's a lot more to the game ahead, and you, know, you can't just throw the game in because, oh, you got set back or because you lost everything you had, you can't just throw the game. You gotta stick it out and you gotta you gotta do your best to there's only two options. You got two options. Either you can play the victim or you can play the warrior. Only one of those options allows you mental freedom.